Tune in to the Diva Hot Shop. Hey, you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Today, my guest is Gus San. He works in the entertainment industry, filmmaking. Thank you, Gus San, for joining us. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me. No problem. So um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about, I know I read your profile and just wanted to get into um, some of the things that was you wrote about, about like dating and you having a dating coach and then I know you're making a movie about your experience, right? Yeah, so we're filming a documentary, not necessarily about the experience, um, uh, because the story is out there now, but more so on the experience of, quote unquote, trying to uncancel myself. Because uh, if you type in my legal name on Google, it comes up with really bad results and oh, they're wow. all false. So, and I know this is, you know, in the digital age, your name is is everything. Right. So it's going through the process of trying to rebuild my image after something like this uh, happens. So tell me, tell me about your, I know that you had um, social anxiety, dating. What what do you feel was the disconnect between you and how you perceived yourself? Yeah, so here's here's the interesting thing. Um, I, 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 do, I wouldn't consider myself a socially anxious person. And I don't think a lot of people uh, okay. that know me personally, consider me as socially anxious. Uh -huh. um, what happened was last year, I, I I realized that I'd gone through many years of just really working on creative and really working on what I wanted to do as a filmmaker. Uh -huh. And when I got uh, a chance to take a step back and look at everything, I realized I really wasn't one connecting with the world. Uh, I would really just go from point A, point B, not mention anything or talk to anyone in the streets or, mm -hmm. you know, be my authentic self. But then number two, uh, I also just wasn't dating. And part of it was um, I, I started analyzing it and started realizing, oh, I have some fears that I haven't actually processed. Mm -hmm. um, so part of it was trying to understand where those fears came from. Um, and I, I started the whole journey before even the whole dating coach fiasco with with therapy to really get into why I had a problem with just being vulnerable with somebody. Mm -hmm. So um, why do you feel like you had a problem in the past with just being vulnerable? Did you, did you ever, was you able to tackle that? Uh, well, I mean, it's the, the process of uh, it's the fear of rejection per mm -hmm. se. And mm -hmm. it's one of those things that it, it, I'm learning very quickly. It comes with experience. You just got to keep on doing it. Right. Um, but part of the, the challenge, um, prior to was, um, just making somebody feel uncomfortable with any kind of advancement. Mm -hmm. Um, I know it's something that a lot of guys, uh, can resonate with, but also, especially in, in kind of the new dynamics between men and women right now, a lot of guys are afraid to be seen as a predator or, mm -hmm. you know, to be seen as creepy, um, especially with how quickly things can blow up on social media. Mm -hmm. um, I know I've talked to a few guy friends who are like, oh, no, screw that. I'm not going to go out and start dating unless it's absolutely sure something's going to happen. Are you um, sure? Are you serious? It, it, it's 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 wild to say this, uh, but I know a lot of guys who, who have similar experiences where like, I'm shaky about this. I don't really know where to go with this. And part of why I wanted to go to therapy first and really uncover this and dig deep into this is I started to understand from this that I was telling myself some terrible things about myself, Okay. which is if I'm talking to somebody and I'm, I'm interested in them and me communicating interest, if I tell myself, no, that's going to be creepy, then I'm essentially telling myself I'm creepy or okay. I am not worthy of this person's intention or this person's uh, moment. So I started thinking about that and going, no, no, let's really tackle this. This is, this is not something that I want to continue living uh, with uh, day in, day out. So what have you tried dating apps and social and um, social media? How has that worked out? No. So here's the thing. I, I work in digital advertising and I 
hate social media. Okay. I, 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 I'm somebody who does not like connecting via screens. Mm -hmm. Um, and when I started thinking about dating, I initially thought about doing dating apps, but I was like, that doesn't really connect with who I am. I've got this charisma. I've got this confidence. I can't really sum that up in 50 characters or whatever the characters are. See, obviously I don't know dating apps. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, so, and the other thing was, Hey, like, what is that going to do for my overall skills in life? Okay. I'm sure I'll be good at dating apps as a whole, but will that help me with being authentic in the real world? What happens if I get rid of the apps? Am I caught completely lost? So I started trying to, to, to figure that whole part of it out. So do you feel the rule of dating um, and interaction with men and women is different post-COVID or is it about the same? Yeah, I'd say post-COVID for sure. Okay. Um, the world has the world has changed pretty dramatically post-COVID. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I feel like the the time that we had spent isolated during COVID, uh, people forgot what it was like to really connect with one another. And I feel like even though we're still seeing people communicate with one another, I'm not trying to say that we're all isolated. Um, it it feels like we've kind of uh, lost trust in one another. Mm-hmm. Um, like it, it's always strange to me that we I, like I live in Toronto. It's a pretty big city. I'm around people all the time. It's weird to me that I walk around and I don't connect with people on the street. Wow. I'm like, there's people around me. All like there's humans around me. There's connection and opportunities for magic to happen all the time. But we have told ourselves that we are bothering people by trying to have the the most human moment, which is connecting with one another. Right. Right. So walk me through the process when at some point you decide to get a dating coach. Yeah. Right. Right. So, so what led up to that? So I'd been doing therapy for a few months at this point. Um, And the way I worked with my therapist wasn't just a a deep dive into myself, but also it was a way for me to test things out in the real world and then bring thoughts and emotions to my therapy sessions. So I would go and say like, today I'm going to go and ask five people for directions. And then I'd go back to my therapist and be like, these are the thoughts and these are the feelings that I had. So we did that for a while. And I just got really in my head about everything. And I got, um, I felt like I was just kind of banging my head against the wall, so to speak. Um, And it didn't feel like I was taking enough serious action. And it didn't feel like I was taking enough strategic action. And by that, I mean, mentally, I didn't didn't feel like I had the tools to go like, I like this person, I'm going to go say hi to them. Or Mm -hmm. this person is interesting to me, I'm going to go say what's up. Um, So I started searching around. Um, and I reached out to this dating coach, um, that I found online. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's so funny to me thinking back on this because going to his website, first thing I said was, oh, like his (laughs) website just looked like, like typical pickup artist stuff. And like all this, like, like young women everybody's wearing revealing clothing i'm like this is not the way to connect with people but i was like you know what he's got a refund policy on 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 his website let's test it out why not see what happens Mm -hmm. um so i decided to to pull the trigger on that and and see what happened so okay so you decide to move forward with the coach and even though you still had some he was kind of sketchy online but eventually you guys, um, he give you some assignments, he go out with you. Tell me about that experience. Yeah. So the process was, it was a three day session with him one-on-one and his process was, okay, first day we're going to go out to um, the Eaton Center, which is a mall in Toronto. And we're just going to go, I'm going to tell you to go talk to people and I'm just see how you do. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. Second day was now we're going to film the interactions and record them. And then I'll give you feedback on what you're doing wrong and right. Mm-hmm. And then third day was supposed to be, now that you've learned everything, we're going to continue hammering in some of those techniques. First day we did it, um, I was I was going off of what I already do so well, which is, you know, chatting up people. 
Mm -hmm. um, and um, he kept trying to give me some pointers, some pickup artist routines and, you know, some, some sleazy, like psychology behind okay. everything. Mm -hmm. Like I just kept saying, Hey dude, can you give me advice on what I'm doing? I don't need these. Like okay. this is all pretty basic connection stuff. And then we kept going back and forth. And then he's like, don't worry. Tomorrow is where we really get into action. So the second day we go, that's when we're filming interactions. Um, I, I was not a fan of the, the filming. I thought I would <laughs> be okay with it. I was like, ah, you know, it's just filming, but just being mic'd up, seeing that somebody had a camera while I'm talking to somebody that I find attractive, um, just kind of, uh, uh, put me in a a weird place. Okay. And so I know that, so one, what was your biggest takeaway when you was spending time with him? Like, was there any light bulbs going off and you were like, you know what, I can abandon this. I can do this by myself. Or do you feel hiring him was a mistake? Yes. Hiring him was definitely a mistake. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's not something I regret per se, because I've learned a lot from that mistake. Okay. Um, I will say the one thing that he taught me that the one thing he taught me is I should really trust my instinct because mm -hmm. everything he was telling me about the psychology tricks that I can employ on myself, I was already kind of doing. Mm -hmm. And the big takeaway was, Hey, you just need to be social all the time. If you're mm -hmm. social all the time, then talking to one extra person isn't going to hurt. Right. So walk me through. So I know you guys was out. So I, I think what the third or second day, time that you're out and he's giving you advice, this is when this interaction with you being arrested in the public fallout start happens. Yeah, exactly. So let me go into that. So we're getting close to the end of the second day. Um, I'm not feeling this. Uh, he's giving me all this bad advice. And I'm just telling myself like, just ask for the refund, ask for the refund. And then finally, we go to make our way to go review the footage. And in my mind, I'm like, I'm going to ask for the refund. I'm just going to like, yep, I'm done. Um, as we're walking across the street, um, he sees this woman in a pink dress walk by and he says, hey, last one of the day, go. I'm like, okay. So I go, I start a conversation with her. Best conversation of the day, by the way. Aww. Like she was super receptive. We were having a great conversation. I asked her what she was doing. And she was like, uh, I'm uh, my friend uh, uh, fall, flopped on plans. I've got nothing else to do. I was like, cool, let's make some plans. Right. She's like, great. Yeah, let's go hang out. So we started walking and talking. And then as we're walking and talking, uh, a police officer jumps up in front of me and the, the woman and says, hey, do you guys know this guy? And then I look behind me and a few feet behind me is the coach and I panic and I'm like, ah, uh, no. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, you do. He's like, why are you filming her? Doesn't give me a chance to respond. He's like, you get over here. Puts us next to each other, me and the coach. The coach starts saying, oh, it's a social experiment. It's a social experiment. I'm like, right. I'm not following along with this. I'm not going to say anything. Okay. Uh, cop is trying to figure out the situation he's like i don't understand why there's a hidden camera i don't understand why these guys are doing this um so he he gets a, a bunch of questions he asks people a bunch of questions um and then uh tells me hey i'm charging you with voyeurism for a sexual purpose wow and had no idea what that meant in the moment i was like okay wait so I'm filming a conversation that somebody doesn't know about. Is that voyeurism? Sexual purpose? Does that mean like there's an opportunity that can turn, lead to sex? Didn't really understand the term. Uh, so got sent to jail um, in a cell, holding cell for a while. Um, and then um, I, I, I got to speak to a public defender who told me, no, this is a serious crime. Like you could be. So wait, did he go to jail as well or just you? Yeah. Oh, no, he so we to... both went in. I, okay. I was technically, quote unquote, an accomplice, uh, okay. according to the police report. So we both got sent to jail. Um, I, I, I got a chance to talk to a public defender over the phone. And she was like, this is a serious charge. She's like, mm. 
you might see five years of prison and you'd be on a sexual offenders list mm. and just shattered me. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't until the next day when I finally got to speak to a lawyer that the lawyer was like, the story you're telling me is not voyeurism. He's like, that's, you, you're allowed to film a conversation. Right. Um, so I didn't think much. I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to get out of this. It's going to be fine. A week went by the entire week. I'm Googling my name being like, am I going to end up on the news? Am I going to end up on the news? Didn't see my name at all. I was like, okay, it's fine. And then the next Tuesday, um, this is what's wild about the story. Uh, so in the morning, I get a message from my boss and she's like, hey, can we chat? Like, yeah. um, and she's like, we're letting you go. Wow. And it had nothing to do with the arrest. Okay. Just, it was just a coincidence. They were like, hey, your, your role is no longer efficient to the company. We're sorry. We got to let you go. It's like, damn, that sucks. So this is 10 a.m. Tell my friends. They're like, oh, that sucks. 3 p.m. comes around. One of my best friends hits me up and says, hey, I imagine you know you're on the news. Mm. And I was like, what? <laughs> and I saw it. And it was the first time that I'd seen what we were being accused of. Mm -hmm. And the police accused me and the coach of filming upskirt footage in downtown Toronto. Wow. Which is a leap and a jump from what was there. Mm -hmm. So confused, angry, upset. I just lost my cool for like, well, first two nights were definitely lost cool, but the, the, the next few months were the hardest parts for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I know that um, you're working on a documentary right now. Um, and so what do you want people to get out of the documentary once they watch it? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, so the documentary is, is a, uh, there's two parts to it. So one, it's following me through my journey of what I'm calling uncanceled mm -hmm. because something like this, when it comes up on the news, working in the film industry or any kind of industry, you're going to have a hard time getting work, but especially in the film industry, Right. where we've seen people like Harvey Weinstein and, and uh, other sexual predators um, uh, essentially get called out. Um, this was a situation where I wasn't what was being accused of me, but right. the film industry only reads what's on the news. Right. So <laughs> the work had stopped. I had to basically work to try to get back a part of my name. Um mm -hmm. And, and part of this journey right now that we're exploring and uncanceled is how do you get back your name and uncancel yourself from something like this? Wow. Um, so there's that one part, but then the second part, which is very interesting is one of the few people who called me when the news broke out is the director of the film, who's one of my best friends. Mm -hmm. And he was, he was search he was on the news that day because something that he posted was going to end up on the news. So okay. he was refreshing and saw my mugshot. Wow. And I'm his best friend of 10 years. He called me. He's like, I saw the news. What happened? Um, so it was this crazy situation between us. Um, and then when the charges were finally dropped, I was trying to figure out what to do with all this. And I reached out to him and he's like, I would love to document this journey, but also document it from my side. Like, mm -hmm. This is somebody I've known for 10 years. He's being accused of something that's really heinous. Like, let's explore some of the stuff he's talking about. Is there a dating crisis? Are men having issues? Did he film this upskirt footage? Is, is he canceled, essentially? Right. So he's exploring that from his side as well. Oh, okay. I think that's, I think that's, that's a good thing. I, to see different perspectives of it. Like, um... So people can understand, they'll hear your part, but they also see it from another person and they'll be able to put two and two together and be like, oh, it all makes sense, if that makes sense. Yeah, exactly. And and part of it as well is because the story is so complicated, he is also trying to answer the many questions that everybody has, mm -hmm. which is, what? why is this with masculinity? What the hell is a dating coach? 
And <laughs> oh, did he do it? Did he do it? Let's let's dig into this and find out. Yeah, yeah. And and the thing is, you know, like on my podcast, this is why I changed the platform on my podcast a little bit is because I feel like there is a dating crisis in the United States and maybe around the world. Um, I'm not like you're in Canada. I'm in the United States. But, yeah. um, you know, it's just I think somewhere guys just get in their head and they don't know how to verbally or just start a conversation and then ask for a phone number. You know, and yeah. and some way we I don't know if it's from social media or the technology that we have where we lost that just being say, hey, I like you. Can we can we exchange numbers? Can we go yeah. out? Um, so that's my platform. And when I was like, I wanted to talk to you about it, um, have hear your story because you're not the only one going through this. <laughs> yeah. And I'll say the other part of this as well is so there's that side of the guys who are uncomfortable. But then the other side of uh, the men's issue, uh, so to speak, is guys who go the other way, where it's, mm. I'm going to blame women, I'm going to blame feminism, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to really assert myself and be mm -hmm. aggressive. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. um, when there is, I mean, you're dealing with another human. Right. Um, so it's, it's, the way I've started seeing it is, is there's three little avenues here of the issues there's one where guys are uncomfortable two guys who are aggressive and three guys who are have given up completely yeah and it's yeah. because of their discomfort guys who have just said no i'm not going to do this I, I i see even like i see one i saw one guy and he was just okay with the interaction and that was scary to me because you want at some point you want we are human like animals we want physical connection touch and everything like that but what you're saying is true guys have either given up or it's just like you know I, I don't know how to be soft or how to approach a woman so I'm just going to be aggressive and you like it you like it if you don't then somebody else will yeah and there's this there's this stigma I would say of of trying to be vulnerable around mm -hmm. being vulnerable because mm -hmm. it can be seen as weak Mm -hmm. but it's it's such a for me it's such a flawed concept and such a flawed thought because okay. vulnerability is one of the strongest things you can do it's you being totally exposed to somebody right. and saying this is who i am but it's also you going deep into yourself to figure out your own emotions and not understand yourself the best a lot of guys see that as no that's girl that's girl crap well, I don't need to do that stuff. I'm just going to go and tell her this and I'm just going to be a leader and I'm going to be a caveman. And it's like, no, that also causes problems. There's got to be a balance between everything. Right. And if you're not vulnerable, how do you expect for someone to get to know you? Exactly. If you're not willing to open up and share. Now, again, it goes to once you start sharing, if that person might not like what they're hearing, that's their... Right. You know what I mean? But yeah, if you're being vulnerable and you're opening up and you're being your true authentic self, at the end of the day, you put your best foot forward. Yeah, exactly. And it's you being totally comfortable with yourself to a point where somebody says something or, or rejects you, you realize it's not about you, but you've mm -hmm. put yourself out there in its in entirety. Question. So what would you say to someone that's facing public shame or a similar situation of being falsely accused? What advice would you give them? Ooh, I mean, the first thing is let yourself feel what you need to feel. Mm. Um, don't stuff it down. Don't pretend like it's all going to be okay. The mind is such a, a weird organ. And mm -hmm. it's going to create all these false narratives and it's going to create all of these feelings and uh, just thoughts that you did not expect to come out. Mm -hmm. No, that's part of the process. So you have to go through that, number one. And number two, realize in those situations that you do have power. Wow. Um, when I started going through this, um, 
I felt so powerless. I'd been working in the film industry for 10, 15 years. And I felt like it would all, it all just went up in smoke. And I was wow. like, how am I going to recover from this? I can't, can't work with anyone. Right. But when I started thinking about it, I was like, well, what options do I have myself? What can I do? So I started looking at all my options and I started going, I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. And then that's when the world started opening up to me because I understood that power is not a, a, a strength that you, sorry, is not something that you exert over somebody with strength. Mm-hmm. Power is realizing that you have options. Mm. Okay. I like that. I like that. And lastly, what advice would you give to men and women that are navigating the confused dating world today? Oh, just be patient with each other. I mean, there's obviously going to be bad apples on both sides, Mm -hmm. but I feel like a lot of people tend to think that the bad apples are the norm. They're not. Um, One, be patient with yourself and two, be patient with the other side. People aren't malicious. People are complicated. Um, I, I've run into situations where I could easily have called somebody, you know, a bad name or said like, you know, X, Y, Z to this girl. But when you start to think about it, you're like, no, well, let's look at the full context of who this person is or what they're going through or what, what their day was like. And you go, yeah, they're human. No, yeah. it, it's just bad time. It's just, I rubbed them the wrong way or something was just not working between us yeah and I like you said I feel like being kind um also being vulnerable and just not leaving that ego at the door sometimes thousand percent I think one thing that we've forgotten to do especially in the digital age is have compassion and empathy for one another right part of Part of what what happened on social media, especially in my case, is people saw it and had an immediate reaction Mm -hmm. and just made an immediate judgment on it. Um, But if you've taken a second to think what happened here, try to empathize, then you start seeing a little bit more color to it. Mm -hmm. You can have a conversation. But where we've gone in in the world of social media is all about engagements, all about clicks. Right, right. So when do the film come out and where can people um, watch it or view it? Yeah, so the film's going to be coming out at the end of October. Um, you can check it out on my website. It's going to be samlsi.com. Um, mm-hmm. uh, so S-A-M-A-L-E-S-A-I.com. Okay. Well, thank you again for stopping past and talking to us about your journey. Um, Anytime you want to come back, talk about dating after the film is done, you're always welcome. Cool. Thanks a lot, Paris. It's been great. No problem. Tune in to to the Diva Hot Show. Motivate the glow. We get your mouth and fall. Think to my head and toe. I let the whole world know. I let the whole world know.